Hi, I'm David Byrne. Welcome to my master class. Hey, no, David, that's not what we're doing. Really? This is the RISD commencement, remember? My class is called How to Dress Like an Artist. This is the commencement? Wow, okay then. All right, here we go. Welcome to 2021 commencement. I would have loved to have been there with all of you in person today, but well, I can't. But we have some incredible speakers lined up to share their encouragement, their experiences, and well wishes. But this isn't about a bunch of talking heads. This is about you, the RISD graduating class of 2021. Congratulations on this achievement. And thank you all for doing this, for being this, for going to school and actually finishing, and best of luck. I'll be back in a little bit, but for now, I'd like to introduce President Summerson to officially kick off the ceremony. Welcome families, friends, faculty, honorees, staff and trustees, and most importantly, welcome members of the class of 2021 to Rhode Island School of Design's 137th commencement. What a year you have navigated to get here. The path to today was many years in the making, even generations in the making. But I'll bet you never imagined your final RISD year concluding with all the challenges and upsets of this past one. Which makes me wish even more that we were all together to honor your achievements and share in your joy. In spite of all this tumult, you have triumphed and we have all learned to look deep in ourselves and to carry forward what really matters. And today, all of you are what really matters. Today, you will receive encouragement and prudent advice from an amazing group of honorary degree recipients. Each honoree has demonstrated what talent, a developed personal perspective, and perseverance can achieve. Your RISD education has endowed you with all those traits. So listen carefully to the generous wisdom you will hear. I want to add a few bits of advice as well, and like all advice, take whatever resonates with you. First and foremost, apply the same rigor, the same care and dedication that you have honed in your work and studies here at RISD and utilize it in the creation of your life itself. Think about your future as a part of your creative practice, which will become almost like a personal relationship, perhaps the deepest you will know. But also, put the same care and creativity into your other relationships, your friendships, and the very construct of your life and goals. If you can do that, even with the inevitable ups and downs, you will have a fulfilling life. And please remember to listen and have compassion for others. These qualities have grown scarce of late. The world needs your optimism and wisdom to amplify them. One last offered lesson, one particularly important in our current cultural moment. Do not let anyone else's fears or weaknesses define you. Throughout your life, people will try to defeat you or define you differently than you know your truth to be. When this happens, look deeply at why. From personal experience, I can assure you that by doing so, you will uncover unexpected strength, reaffirm your own integrity and identity, and discover new doors opening to you. If you live your life, build your friendships, and make your work with honesty, sincerity, and humility, you will not be affected by other people's projections. Know your truth and live it. Do not let anyone else tell you who you are, what you represent, or how you should exist in this world. Make this pact with yourself that your graduation today is a promise to live your personal truth. Your degree is itself a huge accomplishment, but learning how to live your personal truth is the manifestation of an education. 
by refusing to be stymied by others' misjudgment, by circumstances, by people in power, or pandemics, you will discover who you really are. Those who surpass themselves at times of doubt or challenge or injustice stand a solid chance of making a difference in the world. You have within you a voice that is your own, a creative voice that you have developed here at RISD, and when you encounter a world that has never yet heard it, I guarantee you will be surprised by its transformative power. Through the years, you will also discover how powerful a tool your creative practice can be, however it evolves. At RISD, you learned all about the value of tools, physical, conceptual, and virtual. Today, in a sense, is my graduation too. My first graduation at RISD took place in the auditorium 46 years ago, which is just so hard to believe. But this year, I leave with you, celebrating my joyous 50-year relationship with this institution. I hope that your education will foster the tremendous launch of your capabilities and that the friends and colleagues that you have made here will become part of a career as fulfilling as mine has been. For me, RISD became the internal compass that defined that truth of which I spoke. I believe it can help you to see what others cannot and to be unafraid to take on the biggest challenges. You are ready Class of 2021, you have RISD deep inside of you to remind you who you have become. Listen, remember, ask the tough questions, never settle. I can assure you as a proud alum myself that your voice gets louder as you adapt it to new experiences, new opportunities, new challenges. Now, as graduates of RISD, you can choose what parts of your education you want to carry forward and those you want to shed, and so commence this new and most exciting part of your life. And as you blaze ahead, now as RISD alumni, keep RISD in your orbit so that we may celebrate your successes with you. Congratulations, class of 2021. Many students have received special awards from their departments, and I offer those students a hearty congratulations for being honored and acknowledged for your hard work. There are two additional student awards we would like to announce today. The Warren Family Social Engagement Award and the Stephen Mendelson Community Service Award. I'd now like to welcome Amy Huang, President of the RISD Student Alliance, to announce our award winners. This year, the Warren Family Social Engagement Award is presented to two graduating students who, through their creativity, energy, care for others, and devotion to the greater good, have made a significant difference in the RISD community. The first recipient of the 2021 Warren Family Social Engagement Award is Aya Alganame, whose impact as a community and political organizer will be felt at RISD for years to come. A founding member of the RISD Anti-Racist Coalition, she is among several BIPOC students whose demands for racial justice have accelerated our efforts to make RISD more just, equitable, and inclusive at all levels of the institution. An illustration major, Aya is also the president and founder of RISD Students for Justice in Palestine, through which she has forged alliances across many organizations dedicated to justice for oppressed peoples worldwide and as a research and education coordinator in the Center for Social Equity and Inclusion this year, Aya has focused on centering our academic curriculum on core values of diversity and decoloniality. The second recipient of the 2021 Warren Family Social Engagement Award is Namrata Dore. Namrata lives and works according to the principle that her work as a designer, researcher, and organizer should be accessible and empower tools for collective organizing and advancement. Her commitment to socially engaged work has taken many forms at RISD, from co-curating Reposition, 
a student exhibition focused on post-colonial creative practice to involvement with RISD Arc's call for racial justice across the institution. An architecture major, Namrata has also led initiatives to address inequities in the field, including as a co-founder of the Project Archive Collective, which is engaged in efforts to diversify the architectural design canon and challenge pedagogical and professional inequities in the field. Congratulations, Aya and Namrata. Initiated by an anonymous donor, this award honors the late illustration alumnus, Stephen Mendelssohn, a member of the class of 1981 who passed away from AIDS in 1995. The Stephen Mendelssohn Community Service Award is presented to a graduating senior who, through their energy, efforts and devotion, has significantly contributed to the quality, diversity and development of the community we share at RISD, while fulfilling the requirements of a quality education. The recipient of this year's Stephen Mendelssohn Community Service Award is Kanchi Chopra. Kanchi grew up in Delhi, India with a passion for art and activism, and an applied awareness of design's power to make sustainable change in the lives of others. When she came to RISD, she brought a dedication to service with her. In her first year, she created a board game designed to create communities among people living in emergency housing and has continued to apply her skills as an industrial designer to such issues as environmental waste and the inequities and unethical practices embedded in the fashion industry. On campus, she was a leader of the South Asian Students Association, working to elevate the voices of marginalized groups and to create a culture of allyship across the RISD community. Congratulations, Kanchi. Congratulations, Aya, Namrata, and Kanchi, and thank you for your service and leadership. It is now my pleasure to introduce Provost Kent Kleinman. Students of the class of 2021, I am in awe of what you have accomplished. You have completed one of the most rigorous programs in art and design education under some of the most difficult conditions imaginable. You have made extraordinary work despite constraints that challenged almost every aspect of your practice. You have shown grace under pressure, turned adversity into opportunity, and most importantly, have discovered internal resources that you can draw on whenever you are confronted with adversity. You have been tested like no other graduating class in the history of this institution. And your commencement today marks a truly remarkable accomplishment. For not only did you meet the high standards of your individual degree program, standards that are famously set as much by your own internal passions as by any external measure, but you showed the world that deep individual creative practice is not in any way at odds with a broad commitment to the collective good. I have witnessed with wonder and with pride how you pulled together as a class over the past year to take care of one another, frequently putting the well-being of your collective above your individual needs and dedicating your time and creativity to issues larger than a single project or an individual goal. You have worked as a caring, committed, and intentional community of artists and designers. And in doing so, have demonstrated not just your amazing talent, but your enduring human values. So I want you to know that the faculty and I are profoundly proud of everything that you have accomplished and everything that you stand for. Congratulations. I want now to recognize the RISD faculty who have given so generously and intensely of their own passion and expertise. Among this dedicated and distinguished group of accomplished scholars, artists, and designers, each year, the college recognizes two individuals who embody RISD's commitment to teaching excellence at the highest levels. The John R. Frazier Award for Excellence in Teaching is named for the late John Frazier, a graduate of the class of 1912, RISD's president from 1955 to 1962, and a beloved professor of painting for many years. It was the hope of his family and friends that by establishing a memorial fund in his name, RISD's outstanding faculty would be acknowledged and rewarded. 
I am honored to present the John R. Frazier Award for Excellence in Teaching to an alumna from the class of 1982 and a critic in the architecture department, Laura Briggs. Laura Briggs is that rare educator who broadly engages the art, theory, and science of shaping the built environment, inspiring a wide variety of students to create a sustainable and caring world through her teaching and her praxis. Extending outside the confines of VISD's classrooms and studios and into the greater community of Providence, her coursework and collaborative projects benefit both VISD students and the wider community. Laura Briggs, I am pleased to present you with the 2021 John R. Frazier Award for Excellence in Teaching. Congratulations. I now have the honor to present Professor Paul Sproul with the John R. Frazier Award for Excellence in Teaching. For more than 30 years, Paul Sproul has been dedicated to creating opportunities for young people to grow and thrive through art. His commitment to social justice, K-12 art education, and community building have defined his leadership and his innovation in art and design education at RISD and across Rhode Island. A generous and inspiring mentor and educator, he encourages his students to draw on the power of art and design to communicate big ideas, inspiring all around them to envision art and design education as a conduit to a better world. Paul Sproul, I am delighted to present you with the 2021 John R. Frazier Award for Excellence in Teaching. Congratulations. As you know, last year's commencement took place amid a global lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And because the members of the class of 2020 were spread across the world, we were unable to hold a traditional ceremony. To honor the class of 2020, I'm now pleased to welcome their two class speakers to give their remarks. Sophie Western Xiong graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Bachelor of Architecture from RISD last year, and will be pursuing a Master of Landscape Architecture at Harvard Graduate School of Design in the fall. She is a core member of Design as Protest, an anti-racist design collective. As a designer come organizer, her practice centers on community engagement, spatial thinking, and design activism for public spaces and public good. Please welcome Sophie Weston Xiong. Hi everyone. I graduated last year in the height of pandemic fear with no ceremony or send off, just a lonely plane ride home. In my year since, I transitioned to a new role at RISD, a teaching fellow back in the architecture department. Responsible for supporting sophomores learning remotely, I have also been processing what and how I learned at RISD. Through these dual lenses of student and teacher, I've learned that two things are most important in both design and life, contradiction and care. Matthew Shinoda, the Provost of Social Equity and Inclusion, introduced me to contradiction, or the importance of holding many truths, a few years ago. Initially, I met with him for one of those, how did that problematic teacher get away with that? And what does it mean for students' well-being conversations? But as we sat in his office, we segued into talking about my thesis ideas. I was firing off questions left and right, trying to get a handle on how architecture can operate ethically. How do you create agency in the design process? How does one person design for multiple communities? How do settlers decolonize design? Getting more anxious, I asked, Matthew, how can I ethically design on stolen land? Did I just waste four years learning something inherently fraught? Matthew considered everything, then told me that in every question, many answers can be true, both in ourselves and in architecture. Often, the truths show up in the form of hyphens, as any biracial person can tell you. Contradictions intersect with each other and provide us our lived and learned experiences. We are all embodiments of contradiction and hold many truths. So how does inherent contradiction manifest in design? In juxtaposition, contrast, materiality, and tone, but also in recognizing that there is no neutrality or universality. In every work, there is an opposition between two or more forces, even if it is the force of sameness. But making requires another component, care. 
I look at care in a broad sense. To care is to be thoughtful, to build up healthy communities, to apply what you learn, to be an active citizen, to pay attention, and to pay it forward. At RISD, the only response you can't give when in a critique is that you don't care. You can fail, you can flourish, and arguably you could do both at the same time. But you can't not care about what you've made. The best work is careful work. Not timid, but work that takes the time to understand the world. For me, design and care are the same thing, thinking and relationships. Caring can also mean challenging power that maintains the status quo. This past semester, in my role as teaching fellow, I have been wrestling with how care shows up in the studio. Let's just say my position might have changed, but the situation remained the same. I heard stories of and saw myself teachers unwilling to acknowledge that the current systems of the built environment are oppressive and broken. So what did I do? I urged the professors to address the hypocrisy of engaging with post-colonial works through canonical precedents, of repeating the extractive processes that are standard form in Western architectural education. To teach with care, they would have to share subversive histories and understand how students show up as individuals to design. And those questions I asked Matthew, I kept asking them in my thesis and found ways to create structures that enable communities to be agents of their own change. The work was grounded in Nome, Alaska, where I learned how people live remotely and precariously, and through them, understood the importance of being connected to our natural world. The project designed strategies for retreat from the effects of climate change. My thesis led me to a new identity and a new practice for myself, a new hyphen as a designer organizer, a practitioner who focuses on redesigning relationships of place and power in a process led by care. So what does all of this look like outside of RISD and the places we return or move to? I'm sure it will look different for everyone, but as we go, remember a few things. In every question, many answers can be true. As we design our own features, we must make space for contradiction. And above all, we must put in the time and labor and feeling to care. Thank you, RISD, and congratulations to you, class of 2021, from the class of 2020. Thank you, Sophie. Ala Ashahali graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Apparel Design. While Ala was at RISD, she served as a cultural programmer, resident advisor, and monitor for the Nature Lab, Materials Library, Fitness Center, and Apparel Building. After participating in her first year of Project Thrive, she wanted to give back by taking on the role of a student mentor for other first-generation students. She co-curated a successful exhibit at the Gelman Gallery titled The Color of My Land and was a recipient of the Esper Soiree Scholarship. She was also awarded the Nancy Elizabeth Prophet Award for Advancing Diversity and Inclusion and the Stephen Mendelson Community Service Award. After receiving her degree last year, she began her career as the lead designer for an apparel company based in California. And this summer, she will conduct computation and robotics research at the Princeton University Create Lab. Please welcome Ala Ashuhali. Graduates, families, faculty, and friends. I've been away from RISD for a year now, and unlike current students, I've had a lot of time to reflect. I've been thinking about my relationship with RISD and how we had our good days and our bad days. Although it was not a perfect relationship, we did have so many amazing memories together. I loved the nights in the apparel building, working tirelessly as chick flicks screened in the background. The shifts I worked here at the nature lab with knee top the snake attempting to slither underneath my shirt. Or gathering with my fellow Muslim students who, no, did not want to join the Brown MSA, but still welcomed them with open arms. I will never forget the times the Met spoiled us and made us the most delicious vegan nuggets I've ever had. And I'm not even vegan. I remember the times Tony Johnson made us chant, I'm a thriver, as some of us celebrated being first-generation college students. The relationships that I grew with other RAs, residents, colleagues, classmates, faculty, and facility workers were some of the greatest relationships I have ever made. The highlights list can go on, but it's time to address the days that were not so good. That I and so many others were experiencing. We students were constantly overexerting our efforts and energy with very little time to self-reflect and breathe. We're all so tired. 
Too often, it felt like our professors did not care about our well-being and mental sanity. We were tired not only from working so hard in our studios, but from calling the administration out for dusting important social issues under the rug, like the Black Lives Matter movement and Justice for Palestine. We were tired of experiencing discrimination in our classes. I myself had to battle against my professor who refused to see my work for what it's worth, and instead blatantly discriminated against my identity as a Muslim. These kinds of things were not uncommon in my experience at RISD. If the discrimination was not because of your religion, it was because of your race or gender. RISD has just hired 10 new faculty of color, yet the longest standing faculty who have inflicted their bias are still here at RISD. When and how will RISD take action about that? So much has happened over the past year thanks to the students who held the institution accountable and raised their voices when injustice was at hand. I'm not joking when I say we are the ones who ignited the change that needed to happen. There's one more thing I want to share. As an alum, one year out, as I said, I've had time, the time to reflect on my experience at RISD, especially in relation to the world outside. I've been thinking a lot about this quote by Vincent van Gogh. He said, our earlier life might be compared to sailing on a river, but very soon the waves become higher, the wind more violent. We are at sea almost before we are aware of it. If RISD is our early life and post-graduation is later life, it's possible our experience is actually the opposite of Van Gogh's. For a lot of us, RISD was no sail on the river, rather the waves were very high and we were just trying to stay afloat. But now, like me, you are no longer students and are graduating into a different, much larger world. Out here, it's not a river, more like a lake or even an ocean. And yes, there are waves and there is wind, but somehow they are more accommodating and manageable. Out here, especially during the pandemic, I've learned that health always comes first. To always take the time to breathe and reflect. I remember that without the artists, there will be no art. I've also learned not to be afraid if you do not immediately get the job you wanted or have a lineup of opportunities. I can tell you, the time will come. So do not lose hope. I also want to encourage you to stay creative. Find yourself again without the added pressure of a time crunch. New things will emerge and you are the captain of your next journey. So sail, even if you do not know your destination. Even if there are waves, these waves are yours and you can finally just enjoy the ride. Congratulations again, you've made it. Thank you very much, Ala. I would now like to introduce our 2021 senior class speaker, Catherine Park. Catherine Park is a lactose intolerant Virgo, born and raised in Washington, DC. She is graduating with a BFA as a five-year double major in graphic design and industrial design. During her time at RISD, Catherine served as the 2019-2020 Student Alliance President and focused on issues dedicated to accessibility and community, both as a student activist and a designer. She was inspired to come to RISD by her big brother, William, and after learning that the Met served pizza until two in the morning. Please welcome Kathy. Hello, class of 2021. In one of the many plot twists in the past year and a half, I am so excited that we are actually having some form of an in-person commencement this year. I should probably address the elephant in the room. Later today, we will all graduate together in person, yet our parents and loved ones are in remote lands afar watching us go through a major life milestone on a screen. Hi, Oma. Hi, Appa. I know that not having our family here for many of us is difficult, especially those who are first-generation students, children of immigrants, and international students. But to be completely fair, a significant portion of graduation is hearing our names be mispronounced at 500 decibels, so at least our family doesn't happen to witness that in person. At this point, I'm sure all of you are so sick of hearing the new lingo that has permeated our lives since the great RISD evacuation of March 2020. New normal, social distancing, or perhaps the worst of all, unprecedented times. Ugh. But let's look at the bright side. The great thing about living through unprecedented times is that it gives us a chance to set new ones. More importantly, it also allows us to reevaluate which precedents we can leave behind. And with that sentiment in mind, I would like to share the story of one of my first critiques here at RISD. I was pulling one of those classic RISD stunts where I refused to manage my time and started my homework at 11 p.m. the night before. 
And we've all been there. You croak out a hello to the cleaning staff when they come in at 4 a.m., your hot glue gun has burned off all your fingerprints, and your dignity has gone to a dark place where the sun doesn't shine. Anyway, when class inevitably started, I presented my tragedy of a piece, fully expecting for my work to be thrown into the canal. But instead, I was met with an apathetic silence. The professor just mumbled a few words and moved on to the next piece. And I was ecstatic. I hadn't been raked over the coals as I had expected. However, at my next critique, it happened again, and again, and again. No matter the quality or the subject matter of my work, the level of engagement I was afforded from both professors and classmates was minimal. Slowly, I came to realize that silence was actually the worst response you can face in a critique. But at that point as a freshman here at RISD, I was still the anxious child of Korean immigrants who had grown up in the Virginian suburbs and therefore had only exclusively existed in white spaces. So silence was the best and only outcome I had the audacity to ask for. Silence was a welcome reprieve from everything between the microaggressions and the good old regular sized aggressions. Silence in response to the existence of someone who looked like me had been my normal. That had been my precedent. Unfortunately, I learned that my experience was perpetuated both in the RISD bubble and in the world beyond. The invalidation and marginalization of our students of color, the erasure of names and identity by professors who always call us by the name of the one other student of color in our class, and the resulting imposter syndrome, which we carry into all other aspects of our lives. It wasn't long, though, before I had the first of many conversations with peers, student leaders, faculty, and administrators who helped me articulate my invisibility. Together, through the small steps of wildly uncomfortable conversations, educating ourselves on our own privilege or lack thereof, we built the frameworks within crit spaces and within ourselves to make sure that we supported each other. Subsequently, there are three mantras we told each other and ourselves. One, take up space. Two, be unapologetic. And three, ask for more. And when someone tells you that you are too much, tell yourself perhaps they're not enough. After all, Silence is a precedent we all collectively can and should leave behind. As artists and designers, we hold so much power and responsibility for how we shape the futures that don't exist yet. We have the power to shape future narratives and lead how it will look like. We get to design the tools that people will use, the systems in which they will operate, and the visual narratives that they consume. Just like how we have questioned, critiqued, and redesigned the pedagogies here at our institution, we must carry that mentality out to all the spaces that we are soon going to occupy as graduates, whether it be within design or outside of design for issues such as climate change and gender inequality. It's easy to think that this commencement is the ending of one journey for us to transition to another. And on one level, yes, that is correct, but I would hesitate to call this the ending of our RISD journey. Thanks to a certain worldwide event, we have already proven to ourselves that we remain a community even when we don't share a physical space. I have no doubt that we will all cross paths again sooner or later. And the next time we do, we will definitely be older, we might have more tattoos, differently colored hair, or maybe no hair at all. And more importantly, I can't wait to see how we are living the futures that don't exist yet, the dialogues to be had, and how each of us are banishing silence with our new precedents. Class of 2021, congratulations and I'll see you all soon. Thank you very much, Kathy. I am now delighted to introduce our 2021 graduate student speaker, Tisha Bradley. Tisha was born and raised in Washington, DC, and received a Bachelor of Science in Architecture and Environmental Studies from Morgan State University. While studying at RISD, she served as vice president and president of the National Organization for Minority Architecture Students and as Campus Activities Board co-chair. She has worked as a RISD hall monitor, teaching assistant, research assistant, CAD lab monitor, woodshop monitor, photo cage monitor, and a mover with big muscles. She has volunteered at Down City Design and sat on the American Institute of Architects Rhode Island Jetty. This past winter session, she taught a course titled Black Architects. Please welcome Tisha Bradley. Good morning, class of 2021. My name is Tisha Bradley. I stand before you today as the only African-American student graduating from the RISD Architecture class of 2021. As we reflect on the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and every 
black life that was taken over the past year due to racial hate. I want to start by saying congratulations to all the students of African descent graduating today. Thank you for adding flavor to RISD. As you receive your degree today, I want you to know that I see you and I hear you. To my fellow graduate students, we not only mastered it, but we did it during a pandemic. Many of us grieved the loss of family and friends during this time. Some of us even survived COVID without missing a single deadline. More importantly, we learned how to truly put our health first. The graduate class of 2021 made something out of nothing and we turned lemons into lemonade. Together, we co-wrote the Art Student Pandemic Survival Guide with the innovative methodology. For example, we learned how to separate school from home by hanging a backdrop to hide the real mess behind us on Zoom. And of course, we schedule infamous regular Zoom babysitting sessions to force ourselves to get out of bed and be productive. We truly had each other's backs. I want to share a story about my first day of classes at RISD. The first day consisted of the entire class sitting in this very lecture room, pre-COVID of course, doing something the professors called first day, first image. Most professors showed an image of a building. My professor, Carla Strito, showed an image of Nichelle Nichols on the set of Star Trek. If you don't know who that is, she was the first black woman to be featured on the show. He told us a story about how Martin Luther King Jr. said to her that she couldn't quit because her role was important and was larger than herself. He then relates this story to the 500 licensed black women architects in the United States and stated how problematic this statistic is in the architecture profession. As I sat there with my peers, I realized I was not only the one representative of black students in my cohort, but the one woman of African descent. As an alumnus of the illustrious Morgan State University, a historically black college and university, I had just came from a school where most of everyone looked like me to now being alone. I encountered many moments where I felt alone throughout my three years, especially that first year, when at times I wanted to drop out because it was hard for me to see my privileged classmates thrive and rely on family support. Anytime I went down that road, I just thought back to my first day of classes at RISD and told myself, that like Nashelle, I couldn't quit. I got into RISD for a reason, and I belong here. So I want to thank you, Carl, and the RISD Architecture Department for being a part of a predominantly white institution that wants to bring awareness to systematic racism. I didn't learn that statistic about the number of black women architects at Morgan State University. I only learned how to be a good architect. Thank you, RISD, for accepting me with a 2.5 GPA without even knowing I had two jobs and was raising my little brother. Thank you for accepting a recommendation letter from a restaurant manager. Thank you for seeing me as a leader, a teacher, and allowing me to have a voice. Thank you for pushing me to believe in myself. It wasn't always easy, but the three years I have been at RISD have been bliss. You have trained me as an architect, designer, educator, and artist. You have listened when students have raised their voices. And it has been remarkable not walking on eggshells. You have so much room to grow, but I want to give credit where credit is due. 
This journey of becoming a black artist and designer has been one of a kind. Not many people can say they travel to Atlanta one semester for a studio project in the next semester, study photography in Paris on a scholarship. I feel privileged to have been able to experience this as a black woman. I dedicate my degree to all the little black girls that dream of being designers, photographers, educators, artists, and architects. There are black people in the future and we are gold. Thank you and congratulations to the graduate class of 2021. It was done, period. Thank you, Tisha, Kathy, Sophie, and Allah. Each year at commencement, the RISD community honors creative thinkers and makers who have made significant contributions to the worlds of art, design, and culture. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, Rhode Island School of Design is pleased to confer the degree of Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts in recognition of the outstanding achievements of five distinguished individuals. I am pleased to bestow upon David Byrne an Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. David Byrne, you started your creative journey here at RISD in 1971 and we're thrilled to help you complete that journey today. It was here that you laid the groundwork for what would become the utterly original and internationally acclaimed Talking Heads. Your music, performance style, filmmaking and visual art consistently defy categorization, and your work is included in numerous collections, including the Denver Art Museum and the Southeastern Center for Contemporary Art in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I hope you all experience the phenomenal award-winning recent production of American Utopia. David Byrne, in honor of your groundbreaking multidisciplinary pursuits and artistic vision, as well as your lifelong quest for new forms of collaboration and connection, we are delighted to present you with this honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. Thank you, David. Among the illustrious RISD alumni, there are actors, film directors, writers, right, like fiction writers, and a race car driver. And yes, yes, there is a prince. The actual son of the King of Sweden went to RISD. This variety, and unexpected variety maybe, reinforces the idea that this school is where you learn how to think and imagine. It's not necessarily where you learn a craft that you will step into for the rest of your life. There are, for example, a number of actors on the list of alumni. <laughs> Unless things have changed radically since I was here, I doubt that there's a lot of acting classes at RISD. So, although you might have a degree in photography, that may not be what you end up doing. And that's, that's okay. Hopefully, you'll be able to think in ways that will be applicable in whatever you do. That's the idea. There aren't many musical composition classes at RISD either, not that I recall. However, I can attest that some of my musical decision-making was inspired by my directives that I learned in art school. For better or worse, my way of thinking changed during my time here. Okay, and here are some of the takeaways. Some of these are corny, some of them are kind of dubious, but these were some of the ideas that guided me one, be true to your medium. If you're a painter, but your best idea is expressed as a podcast, do it as a podcast. Number two, leave the past behind. Abandon received ideas. 
There are loads of people trying to be the next so-and-so. Don't fall for that. In the beginning, that might result in you doing very little, but that little will be like nothing else and like nobody else. Like someone else said, make it new. Number three, creativity is work. You have to put in the hours. Yeah, it's a job. We've all heard about inspiration and perspiration. And yeah, that cliche is mostly true. Number four, I learned as much from my fellow students as I did from the teachers. Whoops, that doesn't mean your time was wasted here and you should have just hang, hung out at the bar. But uh, what I'm not talking about technique, but I met folks, uh, students, fellow students from other worlds, and I learned from them. Sometimes I learned not to do what they did. My first roommate ended up in rehab. Number five, the world isn't fair. There is discrimination and some people get lucky breaks. Some folks whose work is not that good will, you will see, be very successful. Just because it's successful though, doesn't mean it's the best. Correlation does not mean causation. So keep that in mind sometimes and when that happens. Uh, okay, number six, there are surprises and there is beauty in the everyday, in the vernacular. I learned that the uh, officially anointed work and the artists are only one way of looking at things. And those get revised fairly often. So trust what you love. Number seven, there isn't an obvious practical application for everything. This might seem obvious to art school graduates, but in the real world, investigation and curiosity are often undervalued, which is kind of sad. Number eight this is the last one, never be boring. That doesn't mean be shocking just to shock, but be aware that our time as an audience and as viewers of your work, our time is valuable too. So that's the list. I guess it could have been longer, but that's a pretty good listicle. Okay, could you have saved yourself a lot of time and money and not gone to school and just read this list? I don't think so. <laughs> Those ideas became apparent to me. I internalized them gradually after a lot of processing, fermentation, and the passage of time. Having that time, I realized, was part of what school was for. I'm grateful for the time. I wish you all the best. I hope to see you somewhere on the sidewalk, on the street. Who knows? Soon. All the best and congratulations. Thank you, David. I am pleased to bestow upon Elizabeth Diller an honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. Elizabeth Diller as a founding partner at Diller Scofidio and Renfro and the first MacArthur Fellow in the field of architecture. You have been and continue to be a staunch defender of public spaces. You're also responsible for some of New York City's most iconic and beloved structures and transformations, including the creation of the High Line, the reimagining of the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, and the expansion of MoMA. Elizabeth Diller for shining your creative light on some of the world's most precious edifices and sharing your abundant knowledge with the next generation of architects, we present you with this honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. Thank you, President Summerson. Getting an honor like this is not only affirmation, it's a kind of a prod to push further. So too is being in the company of this year's accomplished honorees. I've always had reservations about graduation, about punctuating the end of one's education with pomp and ceremony. But we all know that education happens in spite of school. As an educator, I could say that. In a cynical view, graduation is an accounting milestone, 
created by a higher education consensus that decides the credit hour requirements that qualify a student for a degree. The reality is that school doesn't prepare you for life. School prepares you for higher education, which is life. So the punctuation of this milestone, to extend a grammatical metaphor, should not be a period, but maybe a comma or an ellipse on an unfinished sentence. I remember what it was like to be in your shoes today, listening to endless speeches, suffocating in an uncomfortable sweaty robe, which is the only thing COVID has mercifully spared you from. What are your wandering thoughts? What happens next? How will I pay off my loans? When can I dump my family and meet my friends? I remember feeling a subtle anxiety of liberation from school, a feeling I had never known, a feeling tinged with a precarious sense of freefall. I remember the psychodrama surrounding my graduation, unfinished coursework, unresolved personal issues, having no plan, much of which I relive every four to five months in my dreams. And I'm not alone. Apparently one of the top five recurring dreams in adulthood, according to Dr. Oz, is not being able to graduate because you miss some requirement and have to repeat the year. But never mind your future nightmares. You're graduating today. And we're here to celebrate this rite of passage into a previously unthinkable world. The pause in life as we know it since March 2020 has allowed us to reflect on the transformational events of the past year. There is no going back to the status quo, to the unquestioned norms of institutions and everyday operational space that we typically sleepwalk through. As you step into the initial stages of a post-pandemic world, and it is your world to shape, I ask you what I've asked my students. What works but needs fixing? What needs total condemnation? What is unrecoverable? And what is all of a sudden imaginable? After many years of seeing the resignation of students to a dysfunctional world, I'm comforted to see a generation for which this spirit of activism is very much alive. Yet inversely, I've detected a palpable sense of guilt and skepticism about the importance of the work that we do as artists, architects, designers, and creatives of all kinds. That it's somehow indulgent. Something's been gained while something's lost. But it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. The critical pursuit of social and environmental justice can coexist with beauty, craft, provocation, failed experiments, and humor. Sincerity and irony can coexist. So class of 2021, as you step out into this precarious world with all the education you've amassed and skills under your belt, don't just go out there to be problem solvers. Be problem makers of problems worth solving. And don't ever let the words risk management ever enter your vocabulary. Thank you, Elizabeth. I am pleased to bestow upon Shepard Ferry, illustration alumnus in the class of 1992, an honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. Shepard Ferry, your renown as a street artist and activist began right here in Providence in 1989 with the Andre the Giant has a posse campaign you created as a RISD student, which led to the founding of Obey Giant. Since then, you have changed urban landscapes around the world, using your artistic vision to inspire the public and generate hope and meaningful community activism. Shepard Ferry, we are honored by your long-standing commitment to RISD and proud of the stand you've taken again and again in support of human rights. Please accept this honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. This honorary doctorate is profoundly meaningful by itself, but I have to acknowledge that it follows several points in my life 
when RISD has bestowed me with less formal honors, all of which I'm unsure if I was worthy of receiving, considering the incredibly talented people who apply to and attend RISD. As a senior in high school, I was surprised and honored to be accepted to RISD. Eight years after graduating from RISD, I was honored to be invited to speak at the school, ironically, to focus on the progression of my street art, for which RISD almost expelled me. Since I'm a product of RISD through and through, this honorary doctorate feels a bit like RISD high-fiving me for being an investment from 30-ish years ago that went reasonably well. I underestimated how well my RISD training would function as a problem-solving toolkit and co-pilot after graduation. In fact, after spending four years at RISD, frequently staying up all night to finish studio projects, while also writing intellectually demanding papers, I found the real world to be comparatively chill. RISD equipped me with a very strong work ethic, a dedication to critical analysis, and a belief that creativity can solve almost any problem. Congratulations to all of you, the RISD graduating class of 2021. You've spent the last year plus working through a global pandemic. I'm sure you can think of plenty of ways the pandemic may have compromised your RISD experience, but I'd like you to consider the ways it may have benefited you. It's natural to have excitement and fear upon graduation, but put your fears aside and consider the extraordinary creative adaptation it required for you to tackle the challenges and embrace the best possibilities of RISD during a pandemic. Life will have plenty of trial by fire moments, but few will measure up to the intensity of a RISD education with a pandemic thrown in for extra stress. You've acquired the tools you need to do amazing things with your art and design in the world. Now the question is, what kind of world do you want to live in and how do you see your art and design both thriving in that world and shaping it? One of the frustrations I often hear from graduates is that upon leaving the competitive but incubating RISD environment, the real world seems somewhat indifferent to art and design. In actuality, people care deeply about art and design emotionally and subconsciously, but it's part of your job to help them crystallize from that emotional ether a concrete, conscious, intellectual appreciation of all forms of creativity. Thomas Wolfe said that culture is the arts elevated to a set of beliefs. So with that in mind, it's not enough for your art and design to solely thrive within a self-contained arts ecosystem. They must infiltrate and permeate all important structures of society. The world is facing many problems, including climate change, a rise in nationalism, ongoing racism, and capitalism concentrating wealth in too few hands while workers and families struggle. The arts connect us to the best part of our humanity as both creators and viewers. Artists and designers are leading edge shapers of civilization. So we need to envision how things can evolve and then create works and projects so compelling that they inspire others to push forward with us. Over my career, I've employed what I call the inside-outside strategy, which means that when the system has shut me out, I find ways or create an alternative structure to facilitate my ideas outside the system. When the system invites me in, I use that access to improve the culture of the system and use its machinery to further my vision. My most important advice is to work hard and never give up on the possibilities your creativity can yield. However, reality can be a real buzz killer for idealism. So understand that problem solving always requires a mix of idealism and pragmatism. Successful people often say, you must be uncompromising in pursuing your vision. But I'd like to add some nuance to that advice. Yes, 
it's important to be uncompromising with your vision and beliefs, but also to be diplomatic and willing to compromise while navigating the mosaic of people, organizations, and businesses that must all come together with some harmony to achieve progress. You'll experience failures and setbacks, but never be afraid. If you have courage, you'll learn from trial and error, adapt and move forward with greater skill and precision. 2021 RISD graduates, the world is yours. Make it the one you want to live in and share with your fellow humans. RISD's given you the tools. Now it's up to you to seize what's in front of you. Thank you, Shepard. I'm pleased to bestow upon Lynn Nottage an honorary doctorate of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. Lynn Nottage as a playwright, screenwriter, producer, director, and the first woman in history to win two Pulitzer Prizes for drama. You have been awarded a MacArthur Genius Grant Fellowship, a Steinberg Mimi Distinguished Playwright Award, a Doris Duke Artist Award, and a Penn Laura Pell's Master Playwright Award, among many other honors. Your work helps viewers move beyond cultural stereotypes and assumptions and empathize with people in circumstances different than their own. Lynn Nottage, in honor of the bold work you have shared with audiences worldwide and your dedication to revealing social and economic inequities, we are pleased to present you with this honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design and invite you to say a few words. Thank you, President Summerson and the RISD Board of Trustees. 30 some odd years ago, I sat in a place similar to where you're all sitting right now with a glorious mixture of joy and anxiety. I was red-eyed from celebrating the night before and more than ready to ease into the next phase of my life. Honesty, I still have very little memory of my ceremony other than the vague sensation of happiness and relief and the slight discomfort of sitting for hours in a very, very hot polyester robe. But what I do remember is the day after graduation, loading my bags and my books and my hand-typed term papers into a junky Carmen Ghia driven by my partner, Tony, and driving into the future, windows down, radio blasting, and feeling light and optimistic. We drove from Rhode Island to New York City, experiencing a new sensation, which was freedom. We pulled up in front of my parents' house in Brooklyn on a late, beautiful spring day, where they greeted me in the front yard with a huge, generous smile. And as I began to unload my bags, eager to move back into my childhood home, my mother said, wait a minute, what are you doing? I said, I'm moving home. And she replied, oh, no, 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 we're done. I asked, what do you mean? And she held fast, we're done. It's time for you to move on, you've graduated. I was in a state of absolute shock, confused, baffled. I asked, what am I supposed to do now? I have no job. I have no place to live. And her response was, you'll figure it out. And with that, my parents went back inside the house, locked the door and left me and my partner standing on the curbside in Brooklyn. And with that, they thrust me into the world to make my way on my own. And I won't lie, I was petrified. I had a college diploma and probably no more than about $50 to my name but I immediately went about looking for a rental apartment and a job. I changed $10 into quarters to feed the payphone and I began my hunt call by call. Hours later, I found what must have been the absolute smallest apartment on record located on West 59th in Manhattan. And I found a minimum wage job in a chocolate truffle shop a few blocks away. And for several days, I resented the hell out of my parents. I felt angry at them for thrusting me into the world without a safety net. But in retrospect, it was one of the greatest gifts that they ever gave me. It was a loving gesture. My parents forced me to confront one of my unacknowledged fears, independence, rather than you know, nurturing and coddling my insecurities. 
They trusted that I had been given excellent tools to succeed, even if I didn't know it at the time. And all these years later, I still keep a photograph that I snapped of my parents on that day after graduation. They were smiling and happy and proud and relieved, probably very much like your parents are today. And to this day, that image of my parents is my screensaver on my computer. It's my reminder to confront each day with the intrepidness and inventiveness that allowed me to drive away from my home armed with only $50 in my pocket, my imagination, and a college diploma. And it is that college diploma that emboldened me, that became my weapon against insecurity. That diploma gave me the foundation on which I have built my life as a theater artist. And that is all to say that I understand the strange sensation of this scary and glorious moment. But remember, you have accumulated the tools, four years of exploration of your craft, your voice, your vision, and now it's within your grasp to enter the world with a ferocious curiosity and a sense of purposefulness. And what can I offer you by way of wisdom? Because I know it's expected of me in this moment. As a theater artist, these are a few things I tell myself before I begin anything new. It has become my creative roadmap, how I craft a narrative. Remember to tell the truth, replace judgment with curiosity, allow your narrative to dictate the form that it takes. Remember to experiment and allow discoveries to be made during the rehearsal process. Don't be afraid to revise your narrative when necessary. Ignore or engage with the critics, but do not let them impede your passion or your progress. And finally, Remember to sustain the complexity of the world because you have to be present, you have to be passionate, be mindful, be open, be forgiving, be protective, be kind to everyone, including yourselves. And remember that at some point, we all get lost in our desires. We surrender to notions of who we should be and what path we should take. We peer into other people's windows as we're driving past and debate whether we should change lanes, but it's okay to take the circuitous, inconvenient, bumpy, ugly road that no one else has bothered to travel because it's where discoveries are made. And I offer my congratulations to the class of 2021. What a crazy friggin' year it's been. You have done what no other class before you has done in the 21st century. You have survived and beat a pandemic. You have been part of shaping a cultural and social revolution, and now you have graduated into the world that hopefully you'll make better. Thank you, Lynn. Lastly, I am pleased to bestow upon Virgil Abloh, an honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. Virgil Abloh, through your category-defying work as an artist, architect, engineer, industrial designer, fashion designer, musician, DJ, and philanthropist, you've raised the bar for creative practitioners everywhere and inspired a new generation of young makers. As founder and chief creative director of Off-White and men's artistic director at Louis Vuitton, you have changed the face of couture, introducing luxury streetwear to high fashion runways around the world. Virgil Abloh, for daring to break the rules and making design a more inclusive and less rarefied endeavor, we are pleased to present you with this honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Rhode Island School of Design. It is also my privilege to welcome Virgil as our commencement speaker to address this year's graduates, their families, loved ones, and everyone else here with us at this special occasion. Thank you, President Summerson, as well, the RISD Board of Trustees. I can't even begin to be thankful for this opportunity, but let alone, I can't even begin to feel um, how ironic this moment is. Now, I myself was a bright-eyed high school graduate that looked at the list of schools that I wanted to apply to and be a part of that community. Uh, because of Shepherd Ferry, um, I wanted to join RISD. I filled out the application, sent it in, and got a big fat no. But uh, let that story not deter you from achieving and going after your goals, because ironically, fast forward all these years later, and over my shoulder, I have an honorary degree from RISD through a whole bunch of hard work and determination. One of the most amazing experiences that I've had 
that has intersected with the RISD community was the moment that President Summerson allowed me to speak and give a lecture to students. That time, I decided to use the activities of the day to be the content of my speech. RISD, of course, was a place that I admired, and I wanted to see the magic for myself. So I spent the day split between multiple departments, between the bookstore or the screen print department or the fashion school, or even the furniture making department. Completely unprepared, I just left myself optimistic and open to any experiences I had. I went to the bookstore, decided that I was gonna make a garment with the community of RISD, because I thought about sharing an experience that could be valuable and also to allow the school to look at themselves. And then the subject of the lecture that evening was to sit in the hall and describe my experiences and actually show the fruits of the labor. It was an impromptu experience that led to some great innovations and great storytelling about my time on campus. What I think is most important is that RISD is a place for that. It's a place to sort of investigate. It's a place for community. So that name RISD holds a lot of meaning for me. I can't stress enough how much of an achievement it is to graduate from RISD on a day like today, because the future will be painted by your ideas. There's nothing more important in my mind than a youthful generation that wants to take on the world with full force and creativity. The world is in need of ideas and ambitious ones, so the education you received has set you on a course for a perfect beginning. And the one thing that I would remind you is to be ambitious, to be imaginative, and to relish in your achievements, because you should be proud of those. Those achievements will take you far in this world. So with that, I say congratulations. And to RISD and the Board of Trustees, congratulations on fostering a special place where students can learn about themselves and go out into the world to make the world a better place. Thank you, Virgil. Class of 2021, you are about to become members of an extraordinary global network through the RISD Alumni Association, which was founded more than 125 years ago. RISD alumni use their talents and bold ideas to help create impact in the world, solving societal and environmental problems, creating new businesses and forms of practice, and inspiring us with their beautiful works of art, products, and ideas that all together describe a better future. Take a moment and think about what you want your own legacy to be as part of this distinctive lineage. Thank you to the team of RISD staff and students who have produced today's event. Thank you also to all the families and friends who are viewing from home. Your safety and the safety of your student is our priority, and we are grateful for your patience and flexibility as we work to find new and inventive ways to celebrate this special day.
extraordinary rendition band. And a warm, and I mean warm, welcome to all of you gathered here today to celebrate Rhode Island School of Design's 138th commencement and the class of 2021. We are all thrilled to have made it through this incredible year, a year like no other, and that at long last, we are able to celebrate in person as we confer degrees to our master's and bachelor's candidates on this very special day. Today is a momentous milestone, but your future and how you steer that is the real accomplishment to come. A future that we eagerly await with you as you lead into your creative lives ahead. Today, each one of us is here to celebrate you, class of 2021. Provost Kleinman, please present the candidates for the master's degrees. President Summerson, upon the recommendation of the faculty of Rhode Island School of Design, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degrees of Masters of Art in Art and Design Education, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Architecture, Master of Industrial Design, Master of Arts in Adaptive Reuse, Master of Design in Interior Studies in Adaptive Reuse, Master of Design in Interior Studies in Exhibition and Narrative Environments, and Master of Landscape Architecture. With the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rhode Island School of Design, I hereby confer the master's degrees with all the rights and privileges appropriate thereunto. Candidates for master's degrees, please come forward to receive your diplomas. Master, Master of, of Arts, Arts and Global, Global Arts, Arts and, and Cultures. cultures. Holly, Holly and, and Gaborio. Gaborio. Elena Kalkova. Master of Arts in Nature, Culture, Sustainability Studies. Alexandra Ionescu.
Paola Valeria Ramirez and Santica. Ariel Wills. Master of Arts in Art and Design Education, Teaching and Learning in Art and Design. Yu Young Chung. Yasmin Jean Gutrud. Master of Arts in Teaching, Teaching and Learning in Art and Design. Emma Metzger. Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, Furniture Design. Kevin Sebastian Costant. Paola Estefania de Ros. John Burnham Dixon. Yutian Duan. Yumeng Gay. Lauren Goodman. Yeah. Eric James Locks. Shreya Tuli. Master of Fine Arts, Graphic Design. Matthew Betlick. Romil Bose Mitra. Bernard Ryan and Lingat Diaz. Everett Epstein. Daphne Sue. Kit Sun Lee. William Minaki. Madeline Woods.
Master of Fine Arts, Digital Media. Thomas Henry Alexander Brett. Emily Bright. Nicholas S. DeFisco. Hannah Savannah. Jiangxian Huang. Catherine Jarvinian. Sungan Kyung. Ali Rosario. Megan Surges. Master of Fine Arts Ceramics. Matthew Becker. Justin Quaid Grubb. Deshan K. Peoples. Colin Hugh Suk Yoon. Master of Fine Arts, Glass. Ashley Ray Harris. Fan Su. Shiki Wu. Master of Fine Arts, Jewelry and Metalsmithing. Yu Yang. Dia Wang. Danny Zhu. Hao Qian Yang. Master of Fine Arts, Photography. Megan Amanda Christensen. Chance Allen DeVille. Sua Shven. Stephanie Padilla.
Master of Fine Arts, Printmaking. Breslin Shea Bell. Kylie Alexis Javalana Hill. Haley Nielsen McKeel. Mariana Isabel Ramos Ortiz. Edward Frank Stefani III. Master of Fine Arts, Sculpture. Hannah Salah Al Sadi. Nadiboho Razangani. Yi Yang. Master of Fine Arts, Painting. Gregory Harrison Dedo. Michael Dispenza. Sean Walker Hutton. Yishuan Pan. Aparna Sarkar. <laughs> Nicole Christian Schanitzer. Rebecca Miriam Sen. Orly Sarah Swergold. Emily Catherine Wilker. Hannah Winkler, Master of Fine Arts, Textiles, Hamad Abid, Anushka Vijay Deveka, Luciana Iwamoto, Zoe Lear Yates, Master of Architecture, Bibal Ismail Ahmed, Chloe Janet Benny, Tisha Bradley. Christina Remy Truitt. Sarah Barashev. Yush Sahai Gupta.
Ian Johnson Kainbaum. Karen Lee Kuo. Jaihang Liang. Sunuja Masurkur. Suma Mysore Krishna. Blair Christine Ramsey. Jin Wang. Wei Yi Xia. Ukwai Sun. Ginny Lu. Rachi Chang. Yang Zhao. Nicholas William Hinkfus. <laughs> Nu Di Wing Li. <laughs> Vindra Vijay. <laughs> Quinn Christopher Wilcox. David William Waite. James Grady Clute. Master of Industrial Design. Syed Alassan. Marid Buganam. Karen Huasakati. Du Cheng. When you do. Chaitan Dusan. Sophie Engel. Dan Lei Huang. Zhu <laughs> Hua Huang. <laughs> Ji Wan Huang. Eugene Wang. <laughs> Timothy Parker Ives. <laughs> Katrina Machado. Tong Jun Moon. Max Pratt. Nicholas Stewart Thomas.
Ben Wayman. Su Meng Tiang. Evie. Master of Arts in Adaptive Reuse, Interior Architecture. Nupur Sadanand Madaskar. Sara Margarita Paz Puyat Nepomencio. De Milade Okun Falure. Sophia Paez Zuniga. Master, Master of Design in Interior Studies, Adaptive Reuse. Christine Chang. Wachin Chen. Young J. Cho. Casey Claire Gallagher. Yaru Hadi. Dongzu Han. Nashita Jaya Chandran. Ichu Jang. Jiao Li. Jiao Li. Japanese Power. Rebecca Marie Pebble. <laughs> Mridula Swamnanthan. Robert William Yang. Master of Design in Interior Studies, Exhibition and Narrative Environments. UEC <laughs> Jari Wu Chu Fan He Rauhan Duan Jing Quan Han Chen. Tinky Chen. Jie Xing Chen. Yu Feng. Ian Brett George. <laughs> Zujian Guo. <laughs> Ilya Ishakov.
Samira Rose Jacob. Joey Zhao. I don't. Yes. Jun Jiang. Cheng Yu Li Ki. Zihong Kei. Siri Lu. Jacob Abbott Lightman. Yuxi Liu. Erki Meng. Siu Pan. Siki Rao. Shriya Sunil Shah. Ruchen Wang. Jin Wen. Tian Yi Shi. Gara Han Chu. Jie Dong Zheng. Han Xiao Zheng. Hai Wen Zheng. Sita Zhang. Yuchen Zhang. Everyone, please join me in applauding our new graduates. <laughs> Provost Kleinman, please present the candidates for the bachelor's degrees. President Summerson, upon the recommendation of the faculty of Rhode Island School of Design, I have the honor of presenting these extraordinary candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Architecture and Bachelor of Fine Arts. With the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rhode Island School of Design, I hereby confer the bachelor's degrees with all the rights and privileges appropriate thereunto. Candidates for bachelor's degrees. Bachelor of Architecture. Shivani Argarwal. Devyanshi Arya. Samuel Caposa. <laughs> Lu 
Namrata Pradeep Dhor. Yasmin El Alawi El Abdalawi. Enrico Giori. Song Gan. Tracy Go. Victor Gu. Hiba Hanif. Pablo Rafael Haraz Garcia de Guardina. Aranya Janri. Alexander Kern. Sophie Scolinos Kusaba. Ritzo Chun Hei Law. Roger Lee. Ruke Lee. Daniel John Mangano. Piper Gregory Matthew. Erica Nung. Kunyu Chi. Luke Michael Perchuk. Noah Horowitz Shipley. Adita Todi. Jisoo Yang. Jen Chen Yu Jan. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Apparel Design. Anna Davies Armstrong. Lily Rosalie Barnes. Kaylin Conant. Lily Irene Durbin. Emily Violet Frisch. Rachel Lynn Haji. Jocelyn Marie Holder. Ellie Mae Jepson. Eleanor Rose Kutzer. Ayu Leon. Velika Mamalohos. Jeremy Miller. <laughs> Mina Sherbetchalu. RV Solo Solovari. <laughs> 
Yuki Zhu. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Furniture Design. Riley Blum. Ben Brooks. Chi Ching Tse. Christiane Caro. Peter De Francesca. Lucy Margaret Friedman. Jason Han. Amos Wan King. J. Rim Kang. Deirdre Eileen Klemek. Ethan Ross Cunahome. Benjamin Craig Lamakia. Nora Eleanor Mayer. Ethan Espen Shaw. Dylan Tesher Williamson. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Graphic Design. Shani Abbas. Lena Alkazi. Leilakni Abdurako. Amanda Barrow. Nicole Cousins. Julia Chu. Kareen Isabel Duque Ang. Catherine Park. Juan Javier Mirasol Sequia. <laughs> Nina Jun Yuchi. Serena Shen. Madi Ko. Julie Alter. Gina Alhanwanani. Yunjong Park. Amanda Tinlin Yang. Ethan Kiyoshi Marakami. Eunice Hong. Jane Lee. Yeah. 
Chun Shen. Jordan Marie Weed. Ryan Quilchain Kang. Xiai Che Labrell Chang. Christy Jalen Zhang. Amy GJ Choi. Etienne James Adams. Destiny Joy Greasegrabber. Shreya Kumra. Madison Paige Sheldon. <laughs> Stefan Tesluk. <laughs> Jada Postadin. <laughs> Kian Matamed Zaman. Soleil Antonia Singh. William Di Natale. Kerbin Radheims Rosario. Simon Shank Misner. Eileen Huang Tran. Tala Christia Golden. <laughs> Natalie Olia. Taylor Shelton Barnardo. Cameron Stewart Galley. Trey Hollinger. William Carter Sumrall. Kartik Tuli. Nicholas Tate Park. Maddie Gavashili. Kai Stewart. Rachel Kim. Jasmine Chan. Jenny Zhang. Industrial Design. Maya Abdulaziz Al Saud. Lila Abigail Cooperman. Theodore Boris Goldstein. Carmen Kelly. <laughs> 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 
Mia Saija. Elena Bremner. Yiffy Max Hu. Ashwarya Bagaria. Sophie Ma Chen. Kanchi Chopra. Woniel Choi. Nicholas Frederick Glazer. George A. Vargas. Sebastian Calvo. Arjun A. Shah. Stephanie Hu. Lindsay Ayanna Moreau. Gia Jeyu Ma. Shua Yuan Jiang. Manav Kedia. Sarah Tullo. Annalise Revelez. Hannah Rose Riley. Therese Isabel Vieda Medina. Elodie Mary Cascarno. Erica Han. Owen Swishuk. Caffrey Fielding. Shona Marie, Mary O'Brien. Trent Kim Lowe. Elan Sun. Amy Huang. Jennifer Shri. Yuing Xuan Wan Wang. Jing Yi Li. Zhang Ji Zhang. Janelle Geraldine Castillo. Anna Rafaela Fayardo. Chen Yi Shi Luo. Joy Lu. Yvonne Yi Shi. Yaotai Kawang. Oh! Yu 
Tao Huang. Ogden Oppheim. Indrashish Duta Roy. Harrison Sawyer Wright. Joe Baxter Barty King. Dorian John Epps. Amelia Filomena Fontana Matarez. Interior Architecture. Yunicho Yunicho. Julie Chan. Malika Kuniddia. Timuki Cornio Priata. Yu Shin Yu. Ceramics. Christy Marie Jayon Chang. Wei Zhang. Eleanor Maria Brooks Paraboom. Maria Irina Gashinska. Film animation video. Aiden Ackerman. Jonah Cohen. Stella F. Collins. Manon Crespin. Gabriel Thomas Mason Durst. Benjamin Aiden Dale. Colin Durgans. Alicia K. Gillette. Kaya Harrison. Nicole Claro. Eleanor McQueenie. Sydney Elizabeth Mills. Leanda Rose Moitoiso. Nacho Ratanaku. Lauren Milan Rasha. Natalie Rivera. Faye Helen Thomas. Jackson Paul Roberts. Chen Ying. Kaori Yasunaga. Woo! 
Livia McKenna Yaw. Glass. Qian Liao. Rowan Raskin. Illustration. Pearl Trixian Ao Yung. Kaylee Sky Bell. Benjamin Edison Bergman. Cade Byron. Salicia Tsua. Catherine Grace Cervini. Stacy Cheng. Alexandra Crampton. Sebastian Yang Di Marino. Matthew Allen Donahue. Nathaniel Epstein Tony. Sarah Gonzalez. Rachel Grace Glucksman. Leanne Gail Herskovitz. Jasmine Xiao. Zenin R. Halawati. Angie Kang. Jeff Katz. Victoria Kobostova. Young Jun Kim. Katya Elisheva Labo Stoll. He Seung Lee. Sun Hyun Lee. Catherine Lee. <laughs> Haley D. Lim. <laughs> Lauren Elise Marin. <laughs> Vibika Mensa. Andreas Lorenzo Mignucci Ortiz. Tamara Miller. Samuel Mateo Molina Wong. Gavin Thomas Murtha. Shelby Vanessa Nicholas. Woo! Emily Ann O'Grady. Abby Park. Woo! 
Young Pak. Owen Rival. Deirdre Rouse. Ju Hong Xiao. Sadie Shipton. Vernon Morgan Shipway. Zachary Simon. Daniel Gray Smith. Zichan Su. William Thomas Theodosatos. Vanessa M. Chinebwa. Ian Harrison Williams. Stephanie Wu. Yao Jiao. <laughs> Tiffany Chi Tring Yim. Hua Hua Zhu. Jewelry and metal smithing. Jacqueline Sung Hee Moon. Yi <laughs> Mei Hu. Painting. <laughs> Zuzanna Belska. <laughs> Barbara Maria Benyak. Olivia Hannah Diamond. Yeah! Emma F. Eichhorn. Yeah! Anisha Gata. Yeah! Ilsa Aileen Jones. Yeah! Isabella Elena Larco. Lauren Camille Levette. Nora Lee. Yanni Lowe. <laughs> Joseph Lofton. Injun Park. Joshua Tia Yang Park. <laughs> Rauf Samilovich Suniyasu. <laughs> Mary Sellers. <laughs> Amy Wang. <laughs> Victoria Luane Wang. Sophie Ryu Zhang. Denny Zhao. Jimmy Zhao. Photography. Maggie Bella Culver Higgins. Isabel R. Fernandez Pujol. Anna Latham. Anita Ni Chen. Woo! 
Chung Shu O Yu. Printmaking. Grace Ji Yun Chang. Sarah Dunn. Caleb Adam Ghetto. Marius Margilian. Ian Wall. Sculpture. Caius Chu. Oops, sorry. Aiden Ray Conley. Julia Grace Clinton. Violet Moore. Henry Newman. Grace Anna Horan. Michelle Carol Offlet. Coleman Fitzgerald Hirschberg. Ridge Osborne Hewitt. Emma Cashman. Jaejung Lang. Zikun Chu. Department of Textiles. Tamar Benami. Jacob Maxwell Betts. Sarah Elena Bryant Cole. Ji Hee Chung. Felicia Devlin. Benjamin Doctor. Pamela Fernandez. Haru Ford. Skyler Alexis Halbeck. Cassia Ann Hope. Wong Kwan Ko. Clara Margaret Reese. Anna Anita Lau. Franieli Rodriguez. Kelsey Ann Robilin. Samuel Clement Slipovich. Everyone, please welcome our newest graduates. For our students who were unable to attend in person, we have a short clip we compiled to recognize them in a virtual walk.
let us congratulate our bachelor's degree recipients. I am so pleased to welcome the class of 2021 to the RISD Alumni Association, which was founded more than 125 years ago tomorrow. Graduates, take a moment and think about what you want your own RISD legacy to be as part of this distinctive lineage. Thank you to the team of RISD staff and students who have produced today's event, and a special thanks to the faculty and students who have transformed this riverfront and helped make this a festive occasion. And thank you to all the families and friends who came to celebrate all over the world with us today. Congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you.
Ha <laughs> ha